David Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. There are beings that have been following you from the unseen world all of your life. Most of them remain anonymous, but no more. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence. You're here. Yes, this is your platform. Yes. We encourage you to take over everything. Mm. Jamie Galloway has experienced incredible encounters with the supernatural world since childhood. Although Jamie is a seer, that means he can see into the invisible world. He says, you don't have to be a seer to discern and cooperate or to deny access to these beings. Jamie says that these beings, angels, the good beings, or demons, the evil beings, follow us. Jamie, explain the angels. I like explaining the good beings. <laughs> Absolutely, Sid. That's a phenomenal question. And you know, what we find in scripture, Psalm 91, 11, it says, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Angels have actually been placed in charge of you to help you fulfill God's given destiny over your life. But there are opposite beings, demonic forces trying to challenge that. And right now we need to realize we're in a cosmic battle, a spiritual battle. But guess what? There are more with us than against us. And that's where the world misses it. They're looking at what they see with their eyes and all the action is in the invisible world. You had some experience with, uh, with one particular angel when you were younger, and then you saw that angel again when you were older. Yes, yeah, so I've had several encounters that kind of gave me some direction in life that were supernatural in nature. And the more I talk to people, they say the same thing. They remind themselves, they remember different encounters they had with angels all throughout their childhood. But at the age of 17, when I came to know the Lord Jesus and I fully gave my life, I gave everything to him. It's like giving him the keys to my life. All of a sudden, a whole new world opened up to me and I began to see in the spirit. And this angel that had been watching over me made himself known to me. And it wasn't like a long, casual conversation. It was just a clue. And then there have been several other clues along the way that this same angel that has been assigned to my life, that Jesus assigned to my life, is watching over me as I participate in what God's mission is that I'm to fulfill. And what you're saying is you are a seer, so you've seen these angels, but whether you see them or not, how many times Maybe in a traffic accident, has your life been spared? And you say, oh boy, I'm glad I did that. No, your angel was pushing you. He was shoving you <laughs> to, to, to get out of the way of that car. Uh, you teach or write about angels with such a holy, deep, uh, reverent fear of the Lord. Yes, well, the Bible actually says in Psalm 34, that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who fear the Lord. And so when you fear the Lord, you actually attract angelic help and angelic ministry to you. And so it's so key that we actually exhibit the fear of the Lord when we're talking about this subject. Anytime I've ever seen an angel said, there's something holy about them. There's something otherworldly. And it's almost an intangible presence. You can't spell it out, it's invisible, but it's something that basically says, God is greater. And so whenever I see an angel, I always think in my head, take me to your leader. I wanna meet the one who's behind the curtain. I wanna see the one who's in charge of you. And that's what angels do. They always, the right ones, point to Jesus. Well, you know, it's a very misunderstood subject about angels. And you each actually teach about um, 
the job description of different types of angels. And candidly, you know, I've been reading the Bible now 50 years, but some of them, I didn't really understand their job descriptions. Why is it important for us to know these things? These are important because they reveal something to us about God Himself. And so whenever we look at the angels and study them through scripture or have a personal encounter, they themselves are having actual personal encounters with the Lord. They love the Lord and they love to serve him. And so they're actually his cosmic assistants serving him over certain things. And so, for instance, the cherubim, the more we study about them in Ezekiel's vision, we realize that they're actually his assistants helping him in his sovereign administration over time. They're seraphim, they're his throne room guardians. And just like any other king has throne room guardians, the Lord himself has throne room guardians that attend to him and wait on him at every need. And that's what the seraphim do. There are many other angels, including archangels, who actually fulfill his mission. And we know that archangels are specific assigned to nations. Michael is assigned to Israel and he watches over Israel and Jesus has assigned him to that particular task. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, uh, but there's the evil guys, the demons, and then the good guys, the angels. And I, I can almost visualize over different times in our lives, real fights going on between, between these two. You actually had a vision with such amazing graphic insight in reference to someone that's been a guest here before, Troy Brewer. Yes, my dear friend Troy Brewer, we are about to do a conference. And as I'm heading to the conference, I go into a vision. I said, Lord, what do you want to show me about this? And in this vision, I see a demonic angel, a dark principality. And he comes down and he begins to do something demonic and he touches Troy on his side. And I see him and he's messing with him, but he specifically touches him on his side and it wounds him. And in this vision, I see an angel from heaven, an angel of light come down and ha he's carrying a sword and it's as if he strikes this dark angel and he says, enough! And a burst of light burst into the atmosphere and this demonic angel stopped his intimidation over Troy. I told Troy that encounter. I said to him that very night, I had this vision and I don't know what it means. Troy went to sleep that night and woke up the next morning after wrestling in bed with something he didn't understand. And he actually at the conference in the green room lifted up his shirt to show us that he had wounds and bruises all across his ribs. That dark angel had come in the night to intimidate him. But God had reassured him ahead of time that there was an angel sent from heaven, from his throne to say enough and that he was going to be guarded on every side because of Jesus' word. That is so, you, you know, it, it's not scary, it's comforting that God has sent assigned angels to every one of you to help you. Mm. The giants or the demons, the dark mirror counterfeit of the angels also are in the invisible world. Once you understand the giants, you can stop their destruction in your life and in your family's lives. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Jamie, you say Every day we engage in battles with these giants or demons. Who are these giants exactly? You know, many people are battling an invisible battle that they don't even have words to describe. And often they feel like they're in a glass wall, they're in a glass box trying to tell everybody what they're struggling through. But I believe God has given us a roadmap. In the scriptures, we find there are five remaining giants in the land of Israel taunting Israel 
intimidating them and keeping them from walking out the fullness in their land of promise. These were the descendants of the giants. And so we have Goliath and we have four others, but God raised up a David to deal with those giants and David inspired a generation. And so those giants reveal something. Every one of us are facing giants right now. And the names of those giants are so important because they tell us something. One of those giants, for instance, has six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. He represents health issues. And when people are facing health issues, abnormalities in their life that don't belong, keeping them from living out their promised life, because Jesus says, by His stripes, we are healed. And so we need to face that giant. There are other giants that are actually keeping us bound to debt and eating our bread. Lami was a giant actually named in scripture and his name means bread eater. But we know that Jesus was born in the house of bread. And so he's the bread that came down from heaven that destroys the yoke of the enemy. And so we need to face these giants, identify these giants, and like David, speak to these giants and say, I'm gonna take you out. I'm taking you out right at your head and I'm gonna worship God as I defeat you. You know, one of the things that interested me as I was reading that teaching, that these giants can, their, their job description, if you will, is to keep us small. Yes. Explain that. Yes, there are certain giants that actually exist to keep us oppressed and suppressed. And their goal is to be the tallest in the room. They don't want anybody to grow taller than them. My friends in Australia call it the tall poppy syndrome, that when anyone is breaking out and actually demonstrating success in society, everybody around them will bat them down. And you know what? I know, you know, because the Bible says that the creator of the universe lives inside of us. So when we lay hands on the sick, there's something that says within us, well, it hasn't happened before. It's not going to happen now. These giants are keeping us small, but once they're exposed, they're history, they're finished. Uh, Jamie, you say it's time for us to speak to the giants we're facing in our life. David prophesied to his giant. Goliath was the giant and that giant was intimidating Israel. But David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And he prophesies and he says, I'm going to come at you. I'm going to take off your head. I'm going to worship God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? How dare he defy the armies of the living God? And so we have to take advantage of the moment. I want you to speak to the demon that's keeping someone small in their gifting, in in their destiny, in their marriage. Speak to them right now. Somebody right now is facing a situation where you just do not feel you can grow any taller. It's in your marriage, in your business, it's in your ministry, it's in your family, it's in your city. But I speak over you that you're going to have the weapon put in your hand to deal with that giant. I speak and prophesy to that giant that has been challenging your promotion and keeping you small. And I speak to that giant and I say, you're going to have an ending. You're no longer going to have your territory. God is going to strip it from you and it's going to be handed over to the sons and daughters of God. How would you say we get our victory? We get our victory in Jesus. Praise and worship bring us into a place of victory and it's it's the glory. And God wants to give us that glory. But many of us... It was so amazing to me, Jamie. Every time on this set that I say glory or my guest says glory, I'm a feeler, not a seer. Yet, um, the glory increases. Come on. Every, the minute that came out of your mouth, the gl- level of the glory mm. just increased. Mm. You know, it's like, a, it's like an eagle flying into the sun. It's got all these other birds trying to get at it, but it's got a special film on its eyes in order to handle the light of the sun. And all those other birds cannot. Some of us have been facing dark spirits. Now it's time to actually fly into the S-O-N, Jesus, because we've been given the ability to actually live and dwell in the glory, and they can't. 
the it goes zoop every time I hear the word glory. Uh, when we return, Jamie will pray the most amazing supernatural prayer over you that will dramatically increase the angelic protection over your life. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! Uh, and you know, uh, during the break I said to Jamie, I, I feel, as I just said to you a little while ago, I feel when the presence of God is here. And I can feel when it's getting stronger. So I just said to Jamie, when I say things like that, what are you seeing? It's like a coal at the altar and the Lord is blowing fresh wind on you. And whenever you feel that fresh wind, it's actually intensifying the burning. It's intensifying the fire. And what I see when I look at you is I see fire over your head because God has placed a fire, a mantle of fire upon you. And that is that lamp that you've been burning in the presence of God and nurturing it with fresh oil every day from the Holy Spirit's presence. That's what's going on. Have you seen any angels during this show? During this show, I saw angels over your studio and it, I saw them over the cameras and one of them was right there and spelled out like in gold letters, upgrade. And I saw wow. upgrade over the cameras. And, I, and so I believe that the Lord is going to upgrade this whole studio, but also all of your equipment as you begin to film in this next season. And so this angel was very specific and wrote it in gold letters, which to me, gold is the glory. Hmm. There's a golden glory. There's a, another level, an increase in God saying, I'm upgrading you and I'm going to give you the equipment necessary to actually film the glory. <laughs> okay, Jamie, this, uh, we got to get the answer to this. <laughs> How do we draw angels into our presence? That's such a great question. Have you ever heard the term, that's a $4 word or that's a 50 cent word, yeah. right? And so people put a value, a monetary value on words. However, when we speak in the spirit, there's a value that's beyond any monetary value. It's the value of the glory. And so we are speaking the currency of the glory into the atmosphere. And so when we actually pray in the spirit, praying in tongues, we're praying in an angelic dialect that actually is releasing the glory of heaven, the, the very atmosphere of heaven in the place we are. And angels like to exist where they're comfortable, just like any one of us, right? They don't want to be battling all the time. They want to be in the presence of God. Fish like water. Yeah. Birds of, of like flying. Yes. Angels like worship and praise to Jesus. And they love the glory. And so whenever you praise and you worship and you release your sound into the atmosphere and you actually participate by praying in the spirit, your words are like apples of gold and settings of silver. It's not a four dollar word or a 50 cent word. It's the word that God is speaking through you. It's the currency of heaven. As we participate in this, we are actually speaking the language of heaven. And there's a reuniting between these two worlds. God wants to do this in this hour and bring a fresh Pentecost to the church so that we re-embrace this wonderful expression, this wonderful gift. And every one of us can do this. We can all pray in the spirit, whether in known tongues or angelic tongues, but God wills. And he's doing that in this hour. That's our secret weapon. God wants to release the tongue to begin to sing and to pray in the spirit what angels long to say. Yeah, you know, in your book, I read a prayer and I said to you, I want you to pray that prayer over our studio audience and over our audience at home. Would you do that right now? Absolutely. I would love to do that. May the Lord of hosts, the God of the angel armies, open your eyes to see there are more with you than against you. 
May the Lord cause his angels to surround you and keep you from harm. May the Lord take action against the wicked agenda of principalities and powers who mean you harm and cause them to fall like lightning while their plans come to nothing. May the Lord commission his angels to watch over you in the day and to guard you in the night. May the Lord's plans cause you to prosper and may he send his angels to go before you as you step into the land he has promised. May the Lord send you with the support of angels to carry out his kingdom purpose. And may he cause miracles to flow through your life as a demonstration of God's power and love. Amen. You, you know, the Bible says you, as smart as you may think you are, you don't know when your end will come. You don't. It could be the next breath. It could be a hundred years from now, but you don't know when your end will come. Do you know if you have, do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven? Or do you know because someone told you? All that spends is knowing for sure. Say this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God I'm so sorry for my sins. I'm so sorry for my sins. I believe your blood, I believe your blood washes them away. Washes them away. And you remove them from my records. And you remove them from my records. The devil keeps trying to remind me. But they don't exist. But they don't exist. I'm, clean. I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, now that I'm clean. Jesus, come and live Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Savior. And, my Lord. and my Lord. Amen.